Welcome to O-State Daily. Casey Porter here. So glad that you decided to tune in. Fans, today we have a very, very, very special guest joining O-State Daily, and that would be Mike Curtis. Very special to Oklahoma State fans. Way more special to me. He was maybe my best friend in the world growing up in Stillwater, America. We fished for many, many catfish in our day. Played a lot of baseball games and some football games, too. That would be one Mr. Michael Curtis. Michael, how the hell are you? It is so great to see you, my man. Man, I'm good. It's uh, it's great to hear from you. It's been a minute. It has absolutely been a minute. So first thing I got to ask you, man, how's the family, dad, all that kind of stuff? Uh, mom and dad are doing great. They're still, every time we think, oh my gosh, they're about to, to take a, a trip downward or something, man, they come right back. They're, they're still chasing grandkids and out there uh, following sports. They absolutely are. Now, they sold the place out south to Stillwater, right? And yes. Are they still living in Stillwater? Nope. Well, we all live in Broken Arrow within about okay. two miles of each other. Yeah, so your sister's close and all. I know she she yes. moved away a lot because she was big in, in gymnastics. Now, I hate to break the news to you, Mike, but you were the second best athlete in your family growing up, right? I've your your sister to, is huge I've come in to terms with that. <laughs> that, that is, uh, that's actually still the case. Uh, about six years ago, I got into competitive bodybuilding and uh, – yeah. Uh, Carrie decided to do it too, and she immediately took the spotlight from me. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay, really? Oh, again? So she just yeah. swiped from right underneath you again? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she jumped cool. in, and, I, and she had to work about half as hard as I did because she's in better shape. And, uh, and man, she looked incredible. Does your dad still make the greatest steak in the history of time? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that has not changed. <laughs> no, I, I keep trying. He, he won't share with me how he does it. That, well, it wouldn't matter because he's got i mean it wouldn't matter if he gave the exact ingredients and, and all that recipe it still wouldn't matter he'd still outdo you because oh, he just absolutely. knows how to do it right <laughs> absolutely and he's got more years of experience absolutely absolutely what wonderful people they were like second parents to me it is great to see your face you can tell i'm super excited to talk to mike curtis again a lineman offensive lineman in the early to mid 90s and so that kind of brings us into let's just jump right in that 91 season we both graduated Stillwater High School in 1991, so that was in the spring. That following fall was your first year at Oklahoma State. You're an offensive lineman. That was the 10 and one season. Yes. So I know how that felt as a fan. A, you know how a diehard of a fan I am, right? Yes. Mike? But oh, how yeah. did that feel as a player? <laughs> Man, I, I tell you, I, I actually started that year as the long snapper. Mm-hmm. So I, I was the deep snapper, and uh, – Coming out of Stillwater, where we went to the playoffs, did great every year, and then uh, and expected to win every game, and and stepping up to an O ten and one season, man, I, I was lost. I had no idea. Not to mention the fact that we grew up in Stillwater. All of our heroes were Cowboys, man. Yeah. We we lived and breathed Cowboy football. So I was experiencing it as a player and as a fan, and man, it was rough. It was it was rough. <laughs> All right, very good. Hey, what was it like for you to play for Pat Jones? I always ask that question when I get to talk to people. Pat Jones, I think kind of from Oklahoma State fans, doesn't get the credit that he deserves for getting Oklahoma State through that period of time that we're talking about. But what was it like for you? Man, I love the man. Uh, Being in in junior high and high school, being around the program, he was always super nice to me. Uh, He was really welcoming whenever I joined the team. Uh, he was definitely a player's coach. I, I know we didn't necessarily have some of the best results, but like you said, we were going through some tough times as a team trying to find our identity and bounce back from NCAA probation. And the one thing I can tell you is that uh, most of us loved him. Uh, yeah. I, I, I could walk into his office and talk to him about anything at any time. That is absolutely awesome. Let me, I know I'm bouncing around here. I'm going to continue to do this because Mike and I have not talked to each other Oh, I'll bet in 25 years. So Easy, something's yeah. going to pop in my head and it's going to come out. So you're just going to have to deal with that as fans, right? But hey, let's go back to 1989. We were sophomores in high school. Do you remember that game when Kel Gundy, Midwest City, Drew Chrisman, they came to Hamilton Field at that time? Of course, Stillwater has an entirely different stadium now. It right. was right there behind left field. But do you remember the, the, when Kel Gundy came in in that playoff game? We had Artie Smith, who played in the NFL. Mark Cheatwood, who you played with yes. at OSU. Charles Werner. Charles Werner, yeah. And, yeah. And Ke- oh, man, we were just absolutely loaded that year. You remember that, how good Kel Gundy was that night? Uh, he, we looked like we were good. And we, yes. we were very confident. And I didn't even know if we needed to be on the same field as him. 
<laughs> it was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, with no effort, throwing the ball wherever he wanted to, hitting his receivers. The he was an amazing athlete. He was absolutely amazing. And talking about amazing, the, the head football coach at Stillwater at that time was also the baseball coach, Bill DeFee, who just moved out of Stillwater. I think he moved back to Pryor here yeah. just here in the last couple of months. Bill DeFee, I know you loved him. He was you were close to him. I mean, you talk about Pat Jones, how welcoming he was. Coach DeFee was awesome, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, I loved Coach DeFee. Uh, as far as a, a football coach, that man knew everything about the game. He absolutely did. Absolutely. Okay, so 1991, 0-10-1, tough way to get your 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 your, uh, your career started there at Oklahoma State. But, hey, if there's anything that we know about Mike Curtis and the entire family is that tough times don't keep you down very long, right? Not so at all. So 1992 rolls around, Oklahoma State jumps out to a, a nice record early on. You tie OU. So, first of all, tell me what you remember about the momentum you created earlier in 1992. Then tell me what you remember about the tie against OU. Yeah, that was uh, that was exciting, but also heartbreaking to be that close. Um, man, like you said, it was we lived and, and breathed for OSU football at that time, and OU was our, our biggest game of the year. Didn't matter what bowl we went to. Didn't matter what happened. Uh, with every other team, when that game came around, it was a hundred percent about OU, and to get that close and and just finish there, there was no resolve, there was no solution to it. It just felt like we were we were left hanging. It did. I think, if I remember correctly, Gary Gibbs elected to choose to kick a field goal to tie the game. Yes, is that correct? Yeah. Ah, oh, come on, man. Come on, it's Bedlam, man. You can't elect a kick a field goal <laughs> yeah, to tie the, the tie, game. Right? Ah, oh, Lee, right? Uh, it okay. probably would have been easier to swallow if we'd have been beat. <laughs> yeah, it, it would have. I mean, hey, I've been beaten by OU before, right? Right. But I, I mean, this was to that one. <laughs> let's go for it one way or the other. Right. Like, like Jimmy Johnson did whenever – Whenever, uh, you know, the actually, I think it was Tom Osborne that went for two against Jimmy Johnson and that kind of deal and, right. and lost to get in Nebraska in 1983. Do that, but then it kind of it comes full cycle. And this is really cool for us because Oklahoma State beat OU in 1976. We were both three years old. We don't remember that game, right? right? right. And so 1995, it had to be a double cool experience for you. First of all, it was the first time ever with our own eyes. We had seen Oklahoma State beat OU, and then you were a part of the team. Wow. Oh, yeah. And shut them out in Norman. Yeah, man. Talk about that experience. Oh, dude, it, it was crazy. Uh, the whole time, it's, as an O-State fan, you always expect something to go wrong. And so we're getting to the end of the game. You know, I'm everybody else getting excited. Like, we're going to win this. I'm like, yeah, don't, say that. <laughs> don't say that yet. Don't say that yet. I've seen too many things go wrong. And uh, – Man, even after it it finished, I just kind of stood there. It was like, this just happened. Um, and I remember walking up. Bob Simmons was a coach. I remember walking up to him and, and and shook his hand, and he said, what do you think about that, Stillwater boy? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he knew. And you were probably like just by half in tears, weren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. so emotional. I couldn't even hardly talk. Did you go to the Tumbleweed that night? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I remember dude, we made it back from Norman. I think we went to the Tumbleweed together that night, if yeah, I remember correctly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We made it back from Norman, and, and it was right at an hour, maybe yeah. a little less, because they were driving on the shoulder trying to get us out of there, and we had uh, the police escort. Yeah. I think, if I remember correctly, it was you, me, and Mike Hadfield went to Tumbleweed together yes. that night. Yeah. I, I don't know why I remember that. I just do. That was – that was awesome, dude. I mean, oh, that yeah. Was, yeah. Oh, totally and that place awesome. was packed, and it was, it was hopping that night. Oh, there were, and there was not a thing you could have done to get any of us in a bad mood that oh, night. No. no possible way. No, it, it was that, great. That was a great moment, an absolute great moment. Hey, and then 95-96 were seasons that didn't see a bowl, didn't see winning records, but did see a lot of progress in the program. So that's kind of where I feel like Pat Jones really – Kind of maybe got a raw end of the deals. I felt like he did get us through the dark times to where you could build some momentum. Of course, building up to the 97 season where Oklahoma State went to the Alamo Bowl. But do you kind of feel like, or do you kind of feel like a, as part of the program that went from 91 to what your last year was, what, 95? Yeah, right? 95. Do you feel like you were part of the, the group of, of guys that built some momentum that built to that 97 season? Oh, yeah. Every year, uh, we believed. We believed that we were doing something worthwhile. Nobody gave up. Uh, nobody gave up any game, and we knew this is 
it, it's going to be a long road, um, especially there were several of us from Stillwater that had been around and seen it. We knew what was coming. We knew what they were trying to do. Uh, there was a lot of exciting things and changes happening around the program. And uh, I, I just knew these, they, they weren't going to be able to keep us down long. You still keep in contact with Scott Tyner, the punter? Uh, on on Facebook, I do. Yes, absolutely. Do you? you guys were like real good friends in college. Oh yeah, obviously. Scott's, Scott is amazing. Uh, him, uh, my freshman year, it was Barry Vincent that was yeah. the punter and the holder, and yeah. Barry's the one that that. Uh, man, I'm gonna tell you a lot of pep talks from Barry Vincent as I'm a you know an 18 year old kid trying to get out there. I think I was 220 pounds. Yeah. And uh, the coaches are, we played Kansas that year. They were going to pull me and not have me snap on field goals because they had, uh, I think it was Dana Stubblefield yeah. that was going to be the nose guard. They're like, uh, yeah, you'll get your neck broke. You can't be out there against him. <laughs> and then uh, and our offensive tackle um, was the one, Matt Josie was the one that uh, was going to snap field goals. He dislocated two of his fingers right before the game. Oh, and so the coaches walked up to me and said, never mind, you're going to snap. And I'm oh. like, but wait, coach. <laughs> I was terrified. <laughs> oh. And uh, oh. Dana Stubblefield was was super cool. He um, he walked up to me right before the first snap, and he, he patted me on the head, and he said, I ain't going to hurt you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice, he could, nice. He could see the fear in my eyes. I yeah. was shaking. <laughs> That's nice. That's yeah. nice. I always felt sorry for you because Scott, Scott, I still say to this day, kick the ball higher and farther than any human being I have ever seen in my life. And I was right. like, damn, Mike doesn't even get to see that. I mean, no. his punts were – well, you got to see probably some of practice, but have you ever seen anybody that could kick a ball as no, high and far as Scott Diner? Monster leg. Monster oh. leg. He's a great athlete, but it, it was tough because – you know, several of those years, we weren't very good. We punted a lot. Yeah, we had to use them too, but that's yeah. for sure. You got a lot of practice. <laughs> and we, uh, it was like running sprints, you know. By the time I got back to the sideline, I was trying to catch my oxygen, and uh, we're, we're back out there again. What's your best memory that you can remember uh, at Oklahoma State in your time there? Man, uh Getting to work with Pat Jones, getting to be around him as a player. I'd, I'd known him. He was friends with my dad. Um, but getting to be around him and and talking to him behind the scenes. George Walstead, uh, special teams coach, defensive line coach, was amazing. Um, and then, of course, it tops it off with my senior year beating OU. Uh, it, it was, I, I got to see some of the biggest, most beautiful stadiums in the country. And that's – you don't get to see that as a, as a kid, you don't, you, you know, in, unless you got a lot of money, which we didn't, you know, and, and you're traveling, uh, you see all that stuff on TV, but I got to see some really cool places. You did. I'm going to try to jog your memory. You might not remember this one. And I told you we were going to bounce around and we were yeah. going to wander around. Hey, that's how this is going to go. You're going to have to deal with it. Do you remember that TCU game? I think it was 1992 where it felt like we were going to win the game the whole dang time. And, like it seemed like there was a goal line stand one way or the other. I can't remember exactly what happened, but do you remember that game? I just, oh, yes. I I still seem like I remember frustration from that game. Absolutely, uh, uh, it was. We were playing. That was there. I, I'm pretty sure. And uh, there had actually been a the Friday when we got there to practice. There had been a big brawl between the teams, um, and, and I'm still young and, and terrified. Some of their players had had wandered out onto the field in our, our practice. I'm not a big guy at this point. Right. And so these guys are all monsters around me. And uh, I just remember thinking, I really don't want to be here. <laughs> yeah. Like everybody else taking their helmet off. I'm putting mine on. <laughs> <laughs> like I just, those those guys were massive. And, um, and that, that, then you get to the game and we really thought that was going to be a good game for us. Yeah. And it just it seemed like one thing after another went wrong. It, it did. It absolutely did. Yeah, and you got to see the transition between Pat Jones and Bob Simmons. So can you kind of take us through that? Yeah. Um, I feel like towards the end, um, Pat Jones might have got a little little lax with us. Like yes. I think he, he – man, when I first got there, he was hard on us. He, he yeah. wanted to produce athletes. He wanted to win. That last year um, – Man, it was just a different group of, of young kids coming in, and uh, it felt like the expectations were maybe a little lower, mm -hmm. and so he just wasn't pushing us hard. Then you got Bob Simmons come in. and um, So you had no problems with the Pat Jones. You just kind of felt like it ran its course. Is that kind of what you're saying? 
Yeah, it was tough for me because I loved Pat yes, as, as a man, as a coach. I, I loved him, and, and I was hoping I would get to play with him. And anytime you're you're in college and you see a coaching change, you never know what that means for you. Yep. And I will say, um, man, we had some rough times with, with Bob Simmons coming in. Uh, he set the seniors down in a meeting, and uh, one of the first meetings I ever had, first time I ever met him, and basically told us he didn't need us. And looking back at it, he was trying to get some people fired up because he came in, he was making some changes. He needs some leadership and, and we didn't have a lot of leadership at that mm -hmm. time. Uh, and I think there was, I think there was 14 of us in that room and all 14 stepped up, decided to be embrace him as a coach, be leaders. And it paid off. He just, man, things were different. We had a new strength coach. Uh, Rob glass was gone. They brought in coach Parker and, uh, so it was a lot of changes and, you know, for your last year as a senior, yeah. that, that, that change is hard to embrace. And he had to really get our attention and get us to understand that this is his team now. And if we were willing to do it his way, then he wanted us on the team. Yeah. What was it like playing with Raphael Denson? He was an awesome athlete, wasn't he? Dude, I've never seen anybody so fast. Yeah. Uh, I think one, one of the 40s he ran when he came in uh, was a 4-2. Yeah. Uh, legit laser timed. And, yeah. you know, for somebody like me over there, I think uh, I literally about blew a gasket, but the fastest I ever ran was like a four nine eight, and I so yeah. I broke a five flat and uh, and Damn I am happy about it. Yeah, my I actually got moving <laughs> fast enough that the wind blew my hair a little bit. And, oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> but back when you had hair. Yeah, but you see those guys. I, you know, another time I, I'll tell you about our my freshman year we played Colorado in Stillwater. Uh, that's the year they had Darian Hagen. Uh huh. And I went down on one of the first punts, and uh, Ron Holt actually got a picture of this most embarrassing nice. picture anybody's ever taken of me. Uh, Darian Hagen, uh, he won the Heisman that year. So he comes down, I go down the field, and they didn't even try to block me. They just let me run down the field. And so I got down the field, and I broke down maybe 10 yards in front of the guy. And he threw his head a couple of different times, different directions, and I laid out and dove to the left. I mean, he, Ron's got a picture of me and my body's even with the ground. I'm stretched out. Only problem was Darian was going the other way. <laughs> and Ron captured him going the other way and me diving this way. And I got up and I got to the sidelines and, and Coach Walstead and, and Coach Jones both met me over there. They said, he's fast, isn't he? <laughs> I was like, I've never seen anything like that, Coach. <laughs> Uh, it seemed like your receivers were like Shannon Culver. And then yeah. a, a young man that we were very familiar with, Mark Cheatwood, yeah. who went to Stillwater, Oklahoma, who was a fantastic athlete. Oh, yeah. And it he, seemed like Mike, he played. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about some of the, the, the guys that were on those teams that you remember and that you were close with. Uh, man, Mark Cheatwood was great. Like I said, Barry Vincent, uh, just being on the special team side, I – you know, I spent some time with Josh Henson, who is now a, yeah. a, a coach. Isn't he at Alabama now? Yeah, great coach. And, uh, I think Alabama. I, yeah. I, I, I've he lost was at Missouri track. for a while as a line coach. And then uh, I think A&M, it seemed like. Yeah. It, Man, he's an amazing guy. Um, it, it's kind of cool. Uh, Scott Waterbury came in yes. when I was a freshman, and he came in as a six foot six, two hundred and forty pound tight end, and ended up being a three hundred and ten pound offensive tackle. Um, yeah. Just a, a lot of guys that I saw that were Jason Gilden. Uh, yes, played for a while. Ended up going to the Steelers. Uh, Stacy Satter Satterwhite was there whenever I was a freshman. Uh, was Jaquay there? Jaquay Thomas? Uh, no, I think he came right. in after right. me. Yeah, yeah uh, Tony Jones, uh, Craig Strickland. Yeah. Those guys were the quarterbacks. Strickland's I'll tell a Midwest this, City boy. Yeah, it, I was lucky that I had a skill like deep snapping because. I was not the athlete that these other guys were. Yeah, and and right. I knew that as soon as I got in there, just running sprints and running drills, um, I, I just wasn't that level. If I hadn't had a skill that that they needed, um, they wouldn't have had a use for me. I, I'd have been a walk-on forever. Yeah. But uh, I found a niche, and it was just it was so cool to be on the field seeing that level. And I don't think most people realize. You watch it on TV. Everybody's hypercritical of players and how they yeah, play. It's ridiculous. But until you're on the field and see how fast yeah. those guys are, how yeah. strong they are, it's insane. You know, I think it was one of the – it may have been mid-90s, but Missouri State came to Oklahoma State. And I sat first row, and Missouri State had a running back that ran right towards where I was sitting. And he made a move, and I was like, Holy cow, that was fast. I mean, it was, it was hard yeah. to describe how fast. It's like if Missouri, if Missouri State guys are that fast, 
then how fast is Darian Hagen? Darry Hagen? You know, yeah. it's like, wow. Yeah, we played. I, I remember my freshman year. Some of the other guys I remember is playing against uh, the University of Miami. We went down to the yes. Orange Bowl Stadium and played. Oh, yeah. And uh, they, they kept running punt safe because they were tired of running. Their punt team was getting worn out. So they kept running punt safe, and they kept their starting uh, – uh, defense on there. Their middle linebacker is probably 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and he's 245, and he had his jersey tucked up under his shoulder pad. Just, I, I think he had an eight-pack. This kid was yeah. just <laughs> insane. So you know, we're getting frustrated because we're getting thumped, and uh, he never touched me. He just let me run by. Well, one time I decided to shoulder check him as I ran by him, and I'm, I'm sprinting down the field. I feel like I'm moving. Like, man, I'm running fast. Well, when I shoulder checked him, I made him mad. So he hit me so hard from behind because he was so much faster than me. He left a face mask imprint on my back. Oh, my God. Yeah, he rolled me. He <laughs> rolled me about 15 yards. And you think, I'm running away from him. He's that much faster than me. Um, and that was, you know, some of those things that happened to me made me realize painfully aware of what amazing athletes these guys are. Absolutely. Well, what do you think about this year's team? Man, I think they're good. I think uh, I think they've got some some kinks to work out. Um, you know, I was really hoping Bowman would would step up a, a little bit more. I I'm very disappointed that uh, Ollie doesn't have more yards. That guy's incredible. Uh, he's an incredible back. I I, I think your lineman they... is this all on the offensive line? I've been defending them. I, I think there's other issues to this other than just to say I think it's too lazy just to say offensive line isn't blocking. I don't necessarily think that that's the case. I don't know. They're not the most uh, physically impressive group right. out there, but they're very smart. They've got some experience. I kind of feel like it's play calling. I feel yes. like we're not using the most with our talent. Uh, we're not going to run Ollie between the tackles because um, we're, we're not overpowering anybody between the yeah. tackles. Right. Um, and I think Bowman needs to be hitting these uh, these five, ten yard passes. I think the tight end is being way underutilized. I'd like to see them. But, uh, every time I see us miss a pass or get one knocked down, I'm looking at the tight end with nobody within 10 yards of him. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's opportunity there. And, and you don't know, is, is the coach still getting used to the, his personnel, what he's got, trying to figure it out? I, I don't know. I'm, I try to give him the benefit of the doubt because I'm a, I'm a real fan. and but it, but it gets hard sometimes because I yeah. know we got more talent and yeah. we're better than what we're showing. So what's it like as an offensive lineman whenever you're getting blamed for running game issues that maybe aren't all – on the offensive line is that just part of the game is that just part of it or how does that feel o-line kind of takes the blame for everything anyway so it it doesn't matter whether it's good whether it's bad um it's the o-line's fault and so i think you kind of get used to that uh i've seen some guys get frustrated and blow up and and, you know it it doesn't last long um most of the o-linemen are are pretty laid back characters um your defensive linemen a little bit more explosive like i wouldn't want them mad at me but your o-linemen um man they, they're just working the problem they're trying to figure out a solution yeah, right absolutely absolutely so hey you know we, we are of the generation born in the early 70s to where the first time we really got serious about watching oklahoma state football they were good i mean jimmy yeah. johnson was coming in gonna knock your damn eyes out now we had a couple of seasons in the early 80s that didn't exactly work the way we wanted to, but Jenny Johnson had all the excitement going, and then you had Rusty Hilger, then Thurman Thomas and Leslie O'Neill, then you had Mike Gundy and Barry Sanders and all those groups. So we grew up with an Oklahoma State football that was different than a lot of different generations. Our Oklahoma State football in our childhood was competing for Orange Bowls, and, and we were right. good and, and doing those kinds of things. So you've run the gamut of having that childhood – to then experiencing the 90s both as a player and as an Oklahoma State fan during the probation period, and then the transition to Bob, to, to Bob Simmons and now Mike Gundy, who's really built this thing into a power. So just kind of explain to, to, uh, to OSU fans what the tenure of, of Mike Gundy has meant to a former player like Mike Curtis. Man, I, I'm going to tell you, I was – after. Pat Jones left. One of the things that I was uh, terrified about is the coaching carousel. Uh, yeah. Like it or not, Oklahoma State University is in Stillwater, America. Mm-hmm. It's it's an ag school. Um, there's not a whole lot out there. The, the The town is growing. There's a lot more to offer there. It's it's beautiful. It's it's growing, but not at the same pace that everybody else. It does is. have high speed internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They got internet now. Um, you know, but it's it's. Um, <clears throat> 
you know, to bring these these top quality players from other places when they're looking at going to a big metropolis school, you know, somebody with with a nightlife and other things to offer, it's it's tough to get them in there. So I feel like if we don't have somebody there that's loyal, understands the 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 environment of the program, the culture, that you're going to have a coaching carousel of coaches in and out of there every two three years, and uh, like we saw with Les Miles, like we saw with Bob Simmons, and so when Gundy came in. You and I both know it takes time to oh, yeah. build. It, it does. And Gundy has made us relevant again, back to where we were when we grew up, when when yeah. when OSU, the, you know, we were Cowboy fans. Like, those yeah. were our heroes. And I feel that way again. I feel every game that we enter, no matter who we're playing, uh, we're in the game. Like, we should win. Um, we don't always. We're used to that as a Cowboy fan. But uh, – but Gundy has given us the opportunity almost every year to to be great. All right, let me back all the way up. I should have done this at the very beginning, but I got so excited. I told you I'd be bouncing around like this. Fill in the gap for Michael Curtis from the last time we saw him put on the Oklahoma State uniform to how we got to this conversation today. Man, I've been uh, I have been all over the place. I, I I managed a couple of restaurants right out of college, and then uh, I got into the call center business, and I was working with Intel, Microsoft, Gateway, Dell. I traveled nice. around the world, um, a outsourced company building call centers. Um, got to meet President Clinton. I've met Bill Gates. I've I've done some really cool things. Uh, I came back to Oklahoma. I became a single father when my kids were six and two. Nice. Um, and, and I knew I had to change my career so that I could give them a chance at life and be home. Couldn't travel as much. Uh, my kids are amazing. I got my, my youngest is a pilot now. My, my daughter wow. works for uh, St. Francis as a surg- surgery tech. What are um, their names, Mike? Uh, Brooke and, um, and Rick, Richard Curtis. Nice. How old so, are they? Uh, Brooke is 28 and Rick just turned uh, 24. Wow. And I've got a grandson now that just turned two this last week. Um, wow. They, they have, you know, as much as I didn't know about parenting, they've turned into great people. Um, nice. and, and that's, that's all you can hope for these days. So, um, but I, I did that and then I came back eventually and Carrie, um, my sister started, uh, she became a physical therapist and she started her own company. Um, we, we worked for a national company for a while. I was a vice president and then she started her own company, um, and now we have a clinic in Muskogee. We have a clinic in West Tulsa. We've got about 35 therapists. We do physical, occupational, wow. and speech therapy. We do schools. Um, we're super busy, and I, I basically run her company for her. Uh, Dad still works for us from home. He does our taxes and, and some of our financial stuff. So it's really cool because I get to see um, my family every day. I can say it now because all the people who had to pay him are not at Oklahoma State anymore, but your dad was the bursar for many years. So if you're <laughs> yeah. upset that you had to actually pay your bill at OSU, he was the one to be upset with, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I can't tell you how many people came up to me and was like, hey, can your dad fix these parking tickets for me? No. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> he made me pay mine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, you were going to be the only one. If, right. if there was the last person on earth that had to pay the parking ticket, it's going to be you, right? <laughs> right, absolutely. <laughs> hey, you ever take your kids out to see the old spread, the old ponds that we used to fish? Uh, I do. I did. Yeah. It, it's the people that bought our old property uh, were from California. And nice. so they were out there and I didn't ever meet them, but I, I did go up to the house. They were out in the yard, introduced myself, told them I grew up here. They let me look around. Uh, I've taken both my kids out there. I've taken my wife out there now and shown her this is, man, nice. I can't tell you how many times we spent down at yeah. this pond and yeah. also how many times we said we were at that pond yeah. and we weren't. Yeah, no, that's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And was the hot tub still on the deck that we built? Uh, no, the hot no. tub is gone. Oh, yeah. oh, man, man. Oh, hey, man, final thoughts. This has been so much fun catching back up with you, Mike. Again, Mike Curtis of Oklahoma State offensive line, deep snapper, 91 to 95 in that period of Cowboy football. So, hey, final thoughts about your career, Oklahoma State football, your family, any of that, Mike? Man, I, I wouldn't change where I've been and what I've done for the world. Uh, I've experienced some really great things, met some really great people. Uh, I'm super excited to connect back with you, Casey. Like you said, we, we went through a lot. We grew up together. Um, I've, I, I keep an eye on you. You do some amazing things. I love listening to you. So um, 
man, just just keep it up and let's stay in touch. Let's do, let's do. Hey, and also I wanted to mention Dan Rooney, a classmate of ours. Wow, hasn't he done good with the folds of honor? Yeah, that yep. lieutenant lieutenant colonel Dan Rooney. Yep. That guy, that guy. Uh, in fact, I saw him at an, o, at an OSU football game last year, and we talked for about five minutes. Yeah. Proud of him, huh? Oh yeah, that's incredible. I uh, every time I go somewhere and I see a folds of honor flag or a cup or something, I'm like, I gotta buy that. I gotta support yeah. that guy. No doubt about it. Mike Curtis, I want to thank you so much. It is great seeing your face again. Thank you so much for joining O State Daily. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me.